Yeah. There's Rick. I mean, the, gra the graduation was today. So at 10, we had lunch after and then, uh, yeah, so. Rick, and, but the, the problem what's is up? Back this up against my daughter's driver's exam is tomorrow, not Tuesday. So. Gotcha. Yeah. That's stressful. Rick, what is up, What's up, dude? buddy? I miss you. Miss you too, pal. Woo! How's the drive going? Oh, it's slow going, man, but I got a son that graduated from college today, so. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Proud of him, man. You guys ready to get started? Yeah, buddy. All right. Well, hey, what's going on, Rick? What's up, buddy? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Good seeing you, man. This is a good looking group of people. Right? I wish the I wish you had a little just... bit a little better lighting so I could see those blue eyes. Oh, you want some better lighting? Hold on. Let you me, got uh... it. Done. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. Wanted to welcome everybody to uh the IG Live Kyle Morgan Q and A. Uh this is Ford Movement Training with very special guests. Uh Kyle with Blue Bearing Solutions, Rick with Warhawk Tactical, and Matt with Subsecond. Welcome, guys. Glad thanks, to have man. you here. Thanks for having uh, us. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Roger. Yeah, I wanted to uh, kick it off with a little bit of an explanation what we have going on in addition to our very exciting uh, 2022 aerial marksmanship experience. We are also having special guests Kyle Morgan as an instructor for his, and let me get this right, Kyle, his, help me out here, divergent, divergent, divergent pistol course, right? Yeah. yeah. One of a kind. Um, That's right. Yeah. I had a guy who was deliberating between, uh, and this is the time I really don't credit myself for explaining your experience, not just... As an, as an instructor, but everything you've done, which I'll let you elaborate on here in just a few minutes, because I had a guy deliberating between going to Shaw Shooting, which is down in Hager, because uh, it's, it's an amazing place, but I, I couldn't explain to him how much he was missing out on um, by not taking your course on May 14th uh, at 12 noon, high noon, right? Uh, with uh, all of us, at the Blessinger Ranch in um, Emmett, Idaho. So uh, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about who you are, uh, what you bring to the table as an instructor, um, a little bit about your background and how uh, everybody can look forward to uh, this amazing Divergent Pistol course we're having. Take it away. Yeah, so I appreciate the intro, Drew, and uh, I'm just, humbled to be amongst this group here and and to have people on this live but so i'm kyle morgan with blue bearing solutions and i've recently retired i'm actually still on terminal leave i've just been proactive with with uh you know this next chapter in my life so um apologize for being on the road for anyone that just joined i'm driving back from florida state my son just graduated to north carolina um you know the divergent uh, pistol course is is it's a it's a mindset and and you know it's it's founded in in the the basic fundamentals of marksmanship but once once that that foundation is 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 validated and and, and it's 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 going to be a, an experience in, in a matter of a couple hours to be able to challenge to challenge myself to challenge you to 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 find the optimal space of growth, right? And I do that in, a, in, a, in some, you know, I have my own ways of doing that and finding that. And I've figured that out through my own life and experience, you know, pushing myself beyond my comfort zone and then figuring out where to back that off. And then that's where the, the optimal space of growth is. So that's why Di divergent means diversified. What? So real quick, just because obviously we, we retain the most following right off the beginning, just so like um, real quick, 
obviously I'm live to try to bring in as many people as I can to support this role and what you're doing. And I, a lot of my following don't know who you are, um, what you've done in the military, what your resume is and kind of where you're pulling from as you're transitioning out of the military into the private sector. So if you could just kind of give a little brief synopsis of who Kyle Morgan is. Yeah. Um, so I've spent 20 years in the military and all of it uh, at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Um, you know, started out in the 82nd as an infantryman and, uh, and then worked my way through uh, special forces with 7th Special Forces Group um, into uh, special operations at Fort Bragg. So, um, you know, I've done several combat deployments and my whole career has been, you know, whether I was deployed in combat, it was training for combat. So um, it, I've been a part of a lot of like significant missions and, and just things that are significant to so many people um, that I, my teammates or, 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 you know, um, it's just looking back at what is asked of us and then being able to really appreciate being a part of that and, and actually making, making a difference and, and whether it's someone's life, you know, being, um, is, is on the line and you have to be there to make those decisions. And, and, um, and I can honestly say after 20 years, I feel like my professional career, you know, I've had an, an, an excellent professional career. And, and I want to be able to take that and, you know, help others in the process of, of helping myself and help myself by, by continuing to grow. And, and this new chapter is this. Well, you say for the last 20 years, for the last 20 years, you basically uh, prepped yourself, you know, to be able to, to walk right into this, right into this work environment. Yeah, I think, I, I, I think it was all preparation for, for what I think is, well, it saved my life. It saved others' lives. It's, it's, um, it's taken a lot of people off the battlefield that, that don't need to be here, you know, and I can honestly hang my hat and say that I don't, I don't feel like I've done, I, I didn't leave anything on the table in that aspect. So I want to be able to take that and then help sharpen an edge. Right. And, and I do that through like knowledge sharing. And then right. that, that, that moment of like when I'm instructing somebody, whether it's pistol, rifle, tactics, like in they and it clicks, the aha moment is like that. That's the stuff that it's all about for me as an instructor, because like I got past that knowledge. Why would I not want to pass that on to others? So you know, I, my job is not to go and, and fight anymore right i will i will protect what i care about but i want to be able to help the people that are out there protecting us every day by using that experience and and in combat or training for combat or even in my personal life um to help people you know prepare and i think rick can probably verify this um i think you guys have been in probably one of the best pipelines to be able to impart knowledge that's cutting edge and i can say that um almost firsthand because uh a lot of the guys that we've trained with and trained and maddie you probably know this they've all gone to darcy and darcy is literally drawing the direct action resource center i think it's in arkansas i can't remember they're drawing all their instructors are trying to from the backgrounds that both you and rick have had so eventually the civilian sector gets this knowledge right but we're essentially cutting out all these middlemen and pushing the direct knowledge from everything like people like you and rick have have done as a career directly to civilians and i think that's probably the most exciting part about this whole thing correct me if i'm wrong drew i'm, I'm gonna jump in real quick here so you got to change the word pipeline right because pipeline that that's a training type deal sure we're, we're giving you experience. That's the part, you know, so I'll give you an example. For me, when I was teaching, when I was a uh, Special Force Advanced Urban Combat Instructor prior to 9-11, in essence, I was teaching theory, right? What me and Kyle are teaching, it's experience. We know it works in the battlefield. 
it works daytime, nighttime. There's no two techniques, you know? It's a solid technique, day or night, doesn't matter, transfers over. And it's teaching people how to be efficient and effective with whatever platform they have. Because firearms manipulation, nine times out of 10, guys are not very good at it or they don't practice it. And that's yeah. the part is it, it becomes second nature. Well, I care what platform you have. So here's a prime example. Why does Rick like to use my left thumb or my support thumb to release my slide release on my pistol? Because it doesn't matter what tool I grab. Boom. I know it's going to go forward. So how do you get that? It's from experience, man. It doesn't matter which one you got. You grab it. Boom. You know, I got it. If your firing thumb reaches it, cool. But to me, if I use my support, it doesn't matter what platform. And those are the kind of things that you get via experience. So I just don't yeah, like you to filter through some of that stuff, man. Like to Rick's point, like you filter through some of the, the, the like, I don't want to say snake oil, but it's like, hey, man, techniques are like techniques, man. You got to figure out what works for you. And that way it becomes like less of something you have to actually put like brain power towards. And you can really focus on assessing a threat and dealing with the mission. You know, the gun handling piece that he mentioned is huge. Like the ability to maneuver the gun in a safe way. And it happens because it's not like I'm changing mags and firefights all the time. Like it's just, that's just the reality. Intimate firefights, right. From me to, you know, 10 feet or so, like, there's no bag changes going on. It's a, if you, it's a transition, if anything, because of weapon ma weapons maintenance usually being the issue. Uh, um, but you need to get, that tool needs to be there, and you need to have rehearsed it so much and practiced it that when it, when you need it, it's there, and you know where that is. So, you know, so that Kyle hit on that I think is huge, um, and then uh, Andrew, you just picked up on it is most guys don't have access to the knowledge that they've had, you yes. know, that he's the TTPs you're getting typically, especially in the civilian populace, they're going to get instruction from a watered down version of the yep. source, the actual source yep. the, with the most experience in the most elite um, agencies and units. So I, I think you should really hammer home what uh, Andrew's saying that this gives somebody especially a civilian, somebody that's, that, that has no means to access someone like you at an affordable rate, um, some of that raw, good information that could change the trajectory of their life, whether they're, you know, studying preparedness as a civilian, whether they're studying tactics in the military, law enforcement career. Um, this is absolutely not like a, a feel good experience. This is coming from somebody with 20 years of some of the, the most elite um, units in the world has to offer. So I think that that says something about this course. And just if we could hit home on the date and time of it one more time for the guys that know where it is and if they're available. Yeah. So uh, May 14th is the course. It's going to run concurrently with our um, aerial marksmanship experience, but it's going to be on a separate flat range from noon to three o'clock, uninterrupted Kyle, access to Kyle Morgan, um, Rick's on site, probably occasionally visiting the flat range as well. Um, Ford Movement Training has got a lot of pretty sharp people and we had uh, five people sign up right away that saw the value in this. It's incumbent upon me to really be able to explain to the rest of the people that are calling in, asking questions, exactly how lucrative and what a special experience this is to have Kyle on site and training civilians direct. I mean, it's just unprecedented. And um, I just don't think a lot of people really understand the value and I've got to get better at explaining it to them because uh, I just don't want anybody to be able to miss this. I, 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 I don't know uh, how else to, to, to explain the, the, the knowledge sharing piece of it. I, I said that in the beginning, it's, it's about that knowledge sharing. I'm not trying to hold on to this stuff because it, it, it may not apply in every scenario in your life, but man, when it, when it happens, it's not, it's not if it's, it's when, right? Like where, like something, even if it's just mindset, like, like 
being able to work in that space of of hyper vigilance or fight flight or freeze like that core your core functions are just like i need to be able to pull this out and it i hope it fits but i'm reacting right and that's what i want as far as that knowledge sharing and then with the with the gun handling gun skills and and then finding that space of optimal growth right because you'll hear me talk about that and it's so important because i don't just push myself so the wheels come off and just keep training in that space i'll intentionally go to a space where you'll hear me say part times constantly out to myself and it's not because i'm like oh yeah what was that time it's because i'm i'm associating a an auditory like uh, like message with a physical response and reaction that, and then because the gun, the gun starts to talk to you. you, it should be talking to you and your conversation with it is not like, Hey man, what are you doing? It's just reacting to what it's telling you. So one, and, one and, question I got for you, Kyle, were why are you laughing? Why are you laughing at me, Rick? <laughs> it, it, just, just the way you're phrasing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty we'll, good. we'll sidebar once the question gets answered. I'll, I'll kind of give you my sense what you're, you know, driving at. Well, yeah. what, one Thank of the you. questions we got were, what are the prerequisites to a, obtain this course? What do you, what needs to be uh, brought to the course? What's the load? Um, who, uh, who, I can answer that. So it's a, it's a three hour pistol block, right? And, you know, gun belt retention holster i don't care if it's a, uh, a friction um it's it's not necessarily i'm going to use elements of combat and competition shooting to to push you into a space that um the group you know can can move along safely um within that three-hour block but man as far as i can take you meaning like within the amount of time i'm going to take you as far as i can um, and, and push you physically and challenge you mentally with cognitive processing, um, uh, and on, you know, targets, transitions, and, you know, all these different things, you know, um, shoot or I'm, no shoot. I'm interested, I'm interested to hear how Rick translates. Some yeah, of let's, yeah. <laughs> let's break it first, Rick, because we're getting, we're getting a couple of questions now about the prerequisites so, like this. So what Kyle's trying to say is basically the timer is the tangible, right? That That's giving you, if you want to say, where you're sitting at as far as how well or not you're doing. The target gives you permission. So, again, if I'm sitting there not holding, if I'm putting all my bullets right there, hey, man, I can ratchet up a gear and go a little bit quicker. And then, obviously, the gun's talking to you while you're doing all this. So, it's just guys go out. I, I see a lot of guys that train, and, and I got it. Do I use a timer every single time? I don't. Right, because there's times I'm figuring stuff out and working techniques. But think about this: for your dry fire, live fire stuff, if you don't have a timer, how do you know where you're sitting at? Now I got it. If I'm going to do a 25 meter slow fire, do I need to pull out my pro timer? Nope, I don't. But again, that's a different discipline. So each thing that you're trying to do, if you don't have a way to judge it, and then you know the telltale sign is when you ask guys, "Hey, what's your whatever? Draw the first shot at different distance. What's your 25 bull?" what's whatever thing you want to pull out of your pocket and they go, well, I don't know. Well, they've got no, how do they even know if they're improving? They don't because we've all been there and correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, you sit there and go, man, that, man, that was good. And you look at the timer and go, no, it wasn't. I mean, we've all been, been, you know, kind of down that road before the timer mm -hmm. doesn't lie to you. So no, it, just to add like, so there's two, two fold, two fold there, right. Of the message that I was actually like trying to communicate and the, the gun feedback right is is the reaction time it, it, it should it should be reduced right there's two things you got to do like unless the gun's hard broke that's a mechanical thing sorry get a new gun but it's remedial immediate action remedial action bro and those need to be instinctual you should not look at that thing like it's a foreign body in your hand when something happens and you're like oh man I'm holding a, some foreign body in my hand and then not this pistol that I should like it be a, an extension of me. Right. The, that's the point I'm making about that in the, the part times to, for me to find the optimal space of growth. Right. I use those times. So like, I'll say, 
you know, 1.10, 1.12. 1.1 and then I'll say these things because I'm associating the tangible, the, the auditory with a, with something that happened in those runs. So then I'll have a one, five, one, like two, two, two. And I'm like, and I keep shooting. And then I'll reference that because I can, I'm not going to stop and be like, what the, what did I just do? It's just data points. So I know as, as a shooter, I'm like, okay, that run, I can reference the times with something that happened physically. You know what I mean? So, so understanding what it's saying to you. Right. And, and, and maybe I, my grip was slightly like, you know, I was, I was squeezing too hard with my, my, my firing hand or which was making my trigger finger like tense. And I was trying to shoot faster than I, you know, whatever, but from a, from a wheels coming off space, right. I'll say it intentionally. Or I'll be like, Hey guys, or gals wheels are coming off here. So just stand back. <laughs> and nope. the whole point of me saying that is I'm going to do that a couple runs to, to not to try to show off because it's probably going to, the wheels are going to fucking come off, man. And that space I'll know. All right. Well, I'll just do that. In like 0. 0.80. Cool. And then I'm like, all right, well, where do I back off? Is it a 10th of a, a sec, uh, a 10th of a second? Is it two tenths of a second? I, and that's individual. Because over time, you figuring out where backing off, and you don't train in that space and the wheels coming off. You train in whatever you can figure out that backed off space, uh, time is. And then that's what we, we really, you know, work towards. And then everything is going to continue. If you do that, every time you go out, and it's not the whole time you're out there training. you you got to do slow fire. you got to do, you know, all, all the, you know, basic everything it's all basic hey, funnels of marketing shit but um hey kyle the, not to stop yeah. you brother but we another question to the follow-up question is like how much experience is required for this course that's like the second time uh, uh, somebody's asked it so yeah what, so uh <clears throat> if you know how to hold a pistol in your two in both your hands and then squeeze the trigger like that's all the experience you need, man. I will make sure that you have, you leave a better shooter. So Outstanding. I'm, I'm not going to oh. put a. There, accumulatively, there's a lot of experience in this group. And I don't know how, you know, I'm not very familiar with Idaho. and, But how often would you say that a guy like with Kyle's experience has opened up to the civilian population where they could just jump into a course for I, I I never. I mean, in my in my tenure with Ford Movement Training, in my tenure, um, and I and I worked with a lot of guys from Kyle's background, and none of those guys that I know ever taught the civilian sector. And, they were always yeah. And so I just want to drive that point home because it's obviously filled with silent professionals that are not clearly depicting everything they know. Right? Obviously, um, just a couple of things I want to say. Um, I'm friends with Kyle outside of business. Um, he's one of the most genuine people I know. And I know that everyone that shows up to that course is going to leave a better shooter. Nothing that he could say during this limited time we have is going to clearly and effectively articulate how, how much better you're going to be able to get when you leave there. And the fact that Kyle, he's driven by purpose. So when you leave there, obviously, I don't want to talk down about any – of the other trainers or companies that going on, there's a lot of good stuff out there, but there is some snake oil, you know, and um, a guy like Kyle is going to protect you from making sure that you're working with the guys and a good network and a good ecosystem of good people that are looking for your best intentions. You know, you're going to have his number. He's going to be making sure the trajectory of your, um, of your shooting career is going to, is going to go good. So I just, I want to hit on that. Um, no, I'm invested, man. Like, Rick, do you, want, Rick, do you want to add anything to um, having the accessibility, like the readily accessibility to someone like you or Kyle and, and as a civilian um, for well, a cost-effective cost budget? Yeah, I mean, I was actually up in Idaho. I mean, you guys throw Idaho under the bus. I was up in Coeur d'Alene, was it last year? You know? <laughs> so there's been some people that float out there. But that was kind of a private deal. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The The point being is... Here's the part that, that people don't get, right? Um, so you talk about the snake oil. I like that because 
I think I'm gonna put it on Warhog.com and sell it for twenty nine ninety five and see if anyone buys it. But the <laughs> the the fact is the experience, right? That that's the key part. That's the key part that people don't get. So you know, the snake oil, like you said, to me, it's it's regurgitating whatever. When you can sit there and go, we have actually used these tactics techniques in combat to save our Thank lives. You. Thank you. You have context. It, that's it. You know, you know why. It, 100 percent and and it's kind of like this right are you going to go to a guy that's going to teach you self-defense and again i'm not throwing other trainers out the bus but don't there talk about killing don't talk about killing if it, if you've never done no killing right you, you, you know so my point being is the experience that we bring is just that it's experience it's extensive <laughs> combat experience plus you got to think us figuring things out along the way because again, if you look at the GWAT, things, especially technology-wise, kind of uh, transitioned over the years, and you just had to adapt and, and get better with those tools. So, um, to me, it's an opportunity. I mean, again, you know, you look at Southern Idaho. I don't know a whole bunch of people going out there, right? And if you guys can make it May fourteenth, I mean, you will not be disappointed. Well, I got to tell you that um, you know Meridian. Boise uh, just got voted one of the least affordable places to live. And that's because we have grown so much in the last year and a half with people relocating um, to our particular corner of the world. Uh, and the, <laughs> it, being a company that teaches uh, enhanced concealed carry permitting, uh, we've had classes and other instructors have had classes that exceed our ability to teach these. So there's a lot of people out there that could really benefit from this course. I can't stress that enough. Um, I wanted to see if I could, uh, since we're kind of running short on time, uh, if I could just feel a couple questions to you guys that folks are asking. Um, <clears throat> I think there was one more individual that asked, um, do we need to have our own firearm? And that's kind of where we get into this um, comfortability, right, with, uh, with guns that you're talking about, Kyle, and um, all this stuff. And so how green of a person are, are you comfortable teaching as long as they come with the right equipment? Yeah, so, you know, this being, uh, this doesn't need to be the first time you've ever held a pistol in your hand, okay? What I'm saying is, is ideally, like, if, if you want to come and you don't, you can't travel with your pistol, but you have experience, hit DM me, and I'll bring an extra pistol for you. Right, right. You know, you know what I mean? It, it, like, that, it's that simple. Like, don't let uh, a, a a resource like in uh, not a resource but like a restriction on your ability maybe your guns like away getting you know gold plated or yeah. whatever right and um through sub second and um my point is is that like there's there's ways you know even through blue bearing like that's what i'm trying to offer as well in the future like hey man there's no reason not to train i'm gonna i'm gonna hand you quality equipment and we're going to fucking train and uh and then you know hopefully you buy some of that stuff because it's good shit and um you know i, I don't it's one of those things though i don't want people to say well i don't have this or i'm waiting on that or i'm like i'm gonna be like, here's your gun belt here's your sling here's your rifle here's your like everything and here's and we're gonna train but for this event like you know it being in you know a couple weeks like just you know hit me up or hit, hit, hit one of us up and see what we can do to make that happen. But this is not an event in a three hour block for me to be teaching you how to, how to, if the first time you've ever held a pistol in your right. reason being I'll, it's I'll just an experienced shooter. I don't, I'm not going to put an experience level on it because I could take a guy that's shot for 60 days and, and if he has the aptitude to learn, we, I'm going to take them further than someone that's got it figured out. You know what I mean? So it, I don't want to put a, a block on it. I just don't want it to, I don't want to take away from the group though. You know, so, you know, it, it, it is very like, don't let this be the first time you've ever shot a pistol. And if it does, then if it is, then we'll deal with it. But regardless, you know, the experience level to me, I could care less if you've been shooting for 30 years or, or six months. Yeah, I think that's the answer for Kyle. 
any other questions here before we uh, begin to uh, to transition out? I just wanted to get everybody the information they need to uh, take advantage of this incredible opportunity with these guys. I mean, um, it's just a wealth of knowledge we're going to have on scene uh, on May 14th, and we just really want you guys to be able to take advantage of it for, um, you know, for all it's worth. So, uh, hey, hey, Drew, real, real yeah. quick. Just you to, hey, Kyle. Uh, Drew, if I might Just lastly, something for you, for you, brother. Rick first, though. What's that? No, no. This, this is this is for you just to kind of help things, gonna, right? I this was just going to – one thing. more thing about the course. Yeah, buddy. No. So – What did you say? This one's yeah, from the heart. Hold on. I, Kyle Morgan's talking now, guys. Hold on a second. Yeah, this is real. No, I just want to highlight, like, th just the way that I think about – like shooting instruction period um i want to apply like combat lessons learned and competition shooting and and then show you the relevancy between both because if you can't learn from professionals of their trade or skills or jobs then you're out of your mind so i will apply competition style shooting with with combat applications where people have your lives have been on the line and, and people have died and all these things, but it's not to sit there and tell you that you have to do this a certain way because Kyle Morgan did it in combat. No, I'm going to tell it and teach it in a way that you're going to know why I'm doing something from a competition style shooting drill um, to a, you know, the combat application piece of using cover or whatever, but either way, that's just Kyle's, Blue Bearing Solutions, like, take on um, those both of those worlds. Sounds good. Hey, so um, I want to cover a bunch of stuff before we close, and some of this involves you, Rick. But uh, for those of you that are willing to join, and Joshua Tree Art Department asked a couple of questions about that, but I think if you can uh, borrow a firearm and you've got a holster um, and a way to to retain that firearm, I think you're, you're going to be in uh, the right spot to be able to take a course like this. Uh, wanted to point the people in the right direction. Um, you can either uh, find us on forwardmovementraining.com, go to public classes, and if you navigate to May 14th, you can enroll directly on the calendar. You can enroll directly in our course or just give us a call. Our phone number is 208-888-4855. It's right on the website, and we can help you on Monday. Um, I haven't checked how many spots are left, but like I said, we got five immediate uh, folks uh, signed up, and I think there's six or seven slots remaining. So we look forward to hopefully seeing all you guys there. Again, um, everybody you see, with the exception of Matt, and I'm going to get in, in his face about this later, is not going to be on site. So uh, the other really exciting thing is you're going to be also adjacent to the um, 20, uh, 2022 Aerial Marksmanship Experience, which um, – Rick's going to be helping out with. Uh, we're going to have uh, Andy Sorensen from Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, we're going to also have a bunch of other guys from other great companies going to be there. Uh, so maybe if that's exciting enough to you and, and something you want to do next year, you can do a, a pre-registration, which we'll, we will probably have about mid-year for next year's event. Uh, I also wanted to say that um, one of the most exciting things about this event is we've got a killer raffle uh, supporting Rick's uh, 501c3 nonprofit. I'll let Rick explain that really quick, but there are over a dozen amazing prizes for this raffle and you're donated to a very worthy cause. You've got uh, an upper uh, from primary weapon systems worth about a thousand bucks. You've got two killer packs from Everly stock. You've got a gun belt, a load bearing gun belt from sub second. You've got um, a, your choice of stocks from Graybo. Um, you, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. Tracer Tactical, you've got three different uh, plate carriers and duff bags. Man, I could go on and on and on. Um, in our bio on our website is the charity landing page. And Rick, please elaborate on exactly where their money's going for us, sir. Yeah, so your money is basically going to uh, scottswish.org. We're a all-volunteer. Let me say that again. All-volunteer 501c3. And specifically, it's going to the NR Duco project. So Duco was my retired combat assault dog that I lost 5 July 2021 to osteosarcoma. So upon losing him, we, we parted up with Scott's Wish. And the NR Duco project has basically three mission statements. 
first and foremost, to keep Duco's name alive. They say you die twice, once when you physically die and when your name said for the last time. So I'm slightly selfish saying that's the first mission is to keep his memory alive. Number two is really the meat of our mission statement. And that is so no other SOF canine handler has to make a medical decision about their canine based on their finances. So currently we are helping out multi-purpose canine Leica. She lost her right front leg in Afghanistan. She's having some issues right now. She is under our care. And let me tell you this, when I called Trent and talked to him, Trent's the, uh, the handler, to take that burden off was absolutely huge. You could tell the relief because here was the deal. When we had Duco's right rear leg amputated, they don't tell you, you know, this is kind of the procedure, what's going on. They basically say, hey, it's going to cost you 10 grand. They throw the money up front and that's a big hunk of change. So we want to make sure that no SOF canine handler has to make a medical decision about their canine based on their finances. And then last but not least is helping out other canine organizations where it makes sense. Uh, Military Working Dog Team Support Association, we sent, we uh, gave them some funds so they could send care packages to our troops and canine deployed during Christmas time. Second Chance Canine uh, helps out veterans with service dogs. And then we helped out a uh, medical facility that was helping one of the dogs out. So that is in essence what the In Honor of Duco project is. Uh, any questions, you can either go to uh, scottswish.org, got a whole layout there. Probably your best bet is if you go to warhog.com forward slash In Honor of Duco. You can learn about Duco, um, all the different things we're doing there and laying out exactly what the project's doing. And follow us. Yeah, guys. <laughs> yep, yep. And if you guys cannot be a part of either the aerial marksmanship experience uh, or uh, Divergent Pistol that's going to be taught by Kyle Morgan, please get involved in the charity because, like I said, it's an awesome charity. Like Rick just explained, we have amazing prizes to win, and the minimum buy-in, I believe, is $25. So your money's going to a great place. Hey, guys, I wanted to thank everybody so much for joining. Um, hey, we've got uh, Kyle Morgan here. We've got Rick here from Warhawk Tactical, and we've got Maddie from Subsecond. Guys, again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, we look so much look forward to having you guys out um, Hopefully, Maddie, next year we'll catch you. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to have a really, really good time, and we're going to learn just a ton of cutting-edge stuff as far as aerial marksmanship and pistol shooting. So thanks, guys, and hope I answered everybody's questions. If not, please DM me, and I'm sure you can DM any of these guys, too, on the prospective sites, and we will get you the answers that you need. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks brother. Hey, guys. All right, fellas. Take care. Bye.